Hi, my name is Umatoni Buku Benzinga, and I am founder of Umatoni, a luxury jewellery brand that's all about showcasing the beauty of Africa and elevating the narrative that jewellery can be an agent for social change. Tony, I, I met you through uh, Jessica Hughes, right? Yes. Uh, the, the Purpose Community? Yes. Um, and you are a, so let's talk through all the roles that you have. So you are a jewellery designer, so how do you like to be known as? I'm a founder. Okay. I have a team that helps with the designing. I do input, but yes. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. So um, if you elaborate a bit more on what the day-to-day -day thing involves. Oh, wow. My two days are ever the same. <laughs> um, so I guess to give you a bit of context, yeah. all of the jewellery um, for my brand is handmade in Kenya. Okay. Um, we are currently in London. I live and I'm based in London most of the time. So typically we'll involve calls to Kenya, talking mm. to my artisans. I think something that's quite unique about our brand is a lot of it happens via WhatsApp. WhatsApp right. calls, WhatsApp messages, because I work with artisans in Kibera. So Kibera is in Nairobi, Kenya, and it's one of the largest urban slums in the African continent. And yeah, so having conversations with them, maybe going through sales report with some of our retail partners, yeah. um, all sorts, changing things on the websites, planning for yeah. opportunities throughout the course of the year, PR opportunities going to the gym just to manage my hand, mental health. <laughs> um, all sorts. I've recently gone into some voiceover work. Right. So all sorts of okay. things. It could be accounting. I wear many hats. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it's difficult to keep track of, of all the different plates. So I guess like a, like a typical self-employed person. Yes. Um, multitasking. Multitasking <laughs> is the name of the game, 100%. Yeah. So I'll... Yeah, to start the day normally in my house and okay. then afternoon, well, mid morning, go to like the Soho Works and work from there. Yeah. All right. And um, your name, Umutoni, what, yes. what does that mean? Yes, Umutoni is a Rwandan name. It means favourite and precious. Okay, nice. Uh, and were you born in UK? Were you born in Rwanda? Yes, no, I was born here in okay. London. Um, I just have a really strong affinity with my East African roots. Cool. Um, yeah. So does that mean that you, you cook the food every day? Oh. Do you speak the language? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I cook the food every day? No, okay. I, I don't. I'd love, I'd love to have it every day. Um, I can understand Swahili. Yeah. I'm not as good as speaking it, but I can get around. Okay, good. Cool, cool. um, say last year or the year before last, I was there for like six months, five yeah. months, the year before. So I can do enough to get around. On the Rwandan side, my mm. Kenya Rwanda, I can say is more or less non-existent. I can okay. do like the greetings and stuff. Mm. Um, so I need to up my game. I need to up my game. <laughs> really cool. put me on blast. <laughs> uh, I mean, what's your favorite dish? Oh, I love chapati. I love like all our beans, matoke, mm. flour rice. Okay, so matoke, is it matoke or matoke? Matoke. Because I thought that was, uh, is it Ugandan? Yeah, so I guess the whole East right. is quite similar. So I'd oh, say okay. matoke is more on the, it is Ugandan, maybe more on the Rwandan side of things. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like, um, like, because I'm from Sierra Leone, so Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ghana, and Nigeria had jollof rice. Exactly, different, different okay. variations. Yeah, cool. that's exactly it. I love some nyam chom, nyam choma, right. which is like just um, barbecued meat, really. Okay. Um, that's really cool. Does Does London have like a, because um, Sierra Leone is kind of what it's supposed to be, if you want to use it for the Sierra Leoneans, but does London have the same kind of place where there's a, there's a diaspora? I think we're pretty spread out. Okay. I think there are, maybe say in Slough, um, right. there's a few, but honestly, it's quite spread out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And would you say that you have a mission mm. in life or with your business? Oh, yes. The mission with the business is, yeah, it's changing the narrative. Mm. The jewelry can be an agent of right. social change and just really taking ownership of our narrative as Africans, as diasporans, mm. um, as a black woman here in the UK. I'm, okay. What I'm trying to do is just amalgamate all of my worlds. Yeah. So as you said, born here in the UK, yeah. but with my um, heritage being 
East African, both yeah. Kenyan and Rwandan, and kind of showcasing that to the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but making a change and having an impact in doing all of that. So making okay. sure that through the process, mm. um, all the value add is on the continent. Right. And, and like talk us through the, the process of when you made the decision, decision to start the brand. Yes. Great question. Um, so I think I've always known I wanted to have a brand. Mm. I think I knew that maybe at 15, okay. 16, I knew I wanted to have some sort of brand. I knew it would be beauty, fashion-ish related. Mm. I didn't know what in. But there are a number of elements kind of brought me to the launch. So okay. number one is throughout my secondary school years, I mm. spent um, a lot of my summers mm. in Kenya. Right. Um, and then would always bring back gifts for friends and family in the form of jewellery which right. I'd get at the Maasai market. And over the years, I'd get more and more um, friends, family, mm. asking for pieces. At the beginning, obviously, I was just using my pocket money, so I'd mm. be like, mm, I love that you love my <laughs> gifts. <laughs> but would you be willing to um, buy a few pieces? And yeah. the answer from there was yes. Okay. So that was really fun. I think that's when I was around, yeah, th that 15, 16 17-ish um, age yeah. and um, sold a few things at like a church fair okay. and I remember making a hundred pounds in one day and being mm. like wow I can buy all the lip gloss flavors <laughs> in the world um, so that was really exciting and inspiring and I think from there I was like okay there is something here but at the same time I um, I was a really big tomboy. Like I played lots of sport. I was I played tennis, I swam, played netball. So I, and I was involved in a lot of extracurricular activities or yeah. clubs. So when I did have free time, I just wanted to be a teenager. I okay. wanted to do normal things, gallivant, West End, <laughs> go to the cinema with my friends. So I wasn't really prioritized with launching a brand at the time. I see. Um, so that's one element. Mm. Second element is in my early twenties, I supported a young girl through school. Right. Um, and I didn't want to go through traditional, say, charity mm. model. I wanted to be able to have a personal relationship. I wanted her to be in Kenya mm. um, and, yeah, do my little part to make some sort of impact in her okay. life. And my grandma was moving from London to Kenya at the time, and she mm. was really involved in, like, church and charity work. And so I just asked her, I was like, hey, sure, sure, this is what I want to do. Can you help yeah. me identify somebody? And she was like, yeah, sure. Um, so through that, that process and journey, I was able to support a young girl who was 13 at the time through mm. school. Um, she, you know, raised by her grandma. Her parents okay. weren't in her life. She had two younger siblings. Typically in Kenya, there is, you go to boarding school, the secondary school. Yeah. But because of, she was such a key figure in the household, we're like, okay, let's not put her in boarding school. Let's just get extra tuition okay. to help. Um, yeah, academically. Mm. Um, and in the short time, space of time, she was able to also just jump class because she was also doing the Kenyan system, which yeah. you know exactly where you are in class. You know who knows who's number one, okay. who's last, okay. <laughs> who's <laughs> in the middle. And so she did jump quite significantly just in a really short space of time. Mm. And what that showed to me was there's, there is an impact here. It was making a difference, right. which is what the intention was. Okay. Um, with that being said, after, you know, I went to Kenya, we spent some time together, invited her to see my grandma mm. and just spend the day together, which yeah. was lovely because I wasn't this fictional character that lived yeah. in America. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, I think it kind of humanized the whole experience, which sure. was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned off camera that you, you did a degree, right? Yes. Uh, was it IT degree? I studied economics. Economics, okay, cool. Yes. So how was the transition from uh, doing... Well, being in that field to create the field? Um, do you know what? I think it was always a plan. The mm. reason I chose my economics degree, honestly, is because, again, I knew I'd wanted to have my own business. I knew yeah. it'd be beauty related. I knew it would be something to do with Africa. And I wanted to yeah. just be seen as serious. Okay, <laughs> and I was kind of good at math. So I was like, do you know what? If I say I've studied economics, people are going to think I'm smart yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and take me seriously. Um, so that was the reason. So mm. for me, yeah, it was, it was fine. Okay. Because I'm very much a person that um, I'm I'm against fashion degrees. Oh, really? That's interesting. Um, Why is that? Well, having gone through fashion school, mm. I just, I'm just thinking that waste of time. Yeah. I think the short course is the way to go, not okay. investing two years of your life okay. in something that isn't guaranteed to get you work. Mm. <laughs> um, and I wanted to quit just that. African parents, there was no way <laughs> I could quit a degree that they didn't want me to do in the first place. Okay. 
So I had to kind of push through and just kind of prove a point. Um, so yeah, I, I guess you've, you've done what I would say is, is a real degree and it supports, like there's, there's a plan B in place, I'd say. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I think also when it comes to a number of degrees, it's the skills. Mm. So it's you're going to have like research, yeah. you're going to be able, there's other things you demonstrate as opposed to, unless you're trying to be a doctor or a lawyer, yeah. those ones are very, <laughs> to stick stick with this. Mm. Other than that, there's transferable skills, which yeah. I think are, yeah, are good okay. and adaptable. And um, what, what was the name of the, the young, young lady that you were uh, sponsoring? Her name was Kui. Kui, okay. Yeah. So, like, according to like Kui, you, you, you've made it. So, but but what would you define as making it according to your own kind of your own standards in life? Mm. Oh, it's a big question. I'm not sure if you ever make it. To be honest, I mean, I used to think yes, you get the big articles, yeah. like you're on TV and magazines, mm. you've made it. But actually. Also, just staying sane, <laughs> yeah. having friends, family. I mean, yes, obviously getting your sales up and mm. being able to um, showcase your brand yeah. and 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 impact lives mm. is is a big demonstration of, of making it. Yeah. I think I'm still defining that. To be honest, I'd say okay. even the past year, 2022, was a like challenging year for me because I found myself just. Um, just going up and down emotionally. Mm. Generally speaking, I'm quite a mellow person. Mm. If things are good, it's fantastic. If things are not great, it's all right, we'll be back up. But I found right. myself really just um, on an up and down spiral okay. emotionally. Mm. And what I realized is I was, my identity was my business. Okay. My brand was me, yeah. you know? And when things were good, that was great. But when things were bad, I was thrown off. Mm. So what I really had to do last year was kind of differentiate the two. All right, so Matoni, uh, in terms of like, managing your mental health, yes, what what would you say that you have in place to kind of um, help you maintain that? Yeah, good question. I mean, for me, <laughs> working out has been great yeah. because I studied um, psychology for my A levels, and that was the whole fight or flight response. And I yeah. think that's something that still happens when there's stressful situations, which happen often, <laughs> often in business, it's good to just get that out. So for me, I try and work out consistently. Um, to now I'm kind of aiming towards four times a week. Um, family, community, friends, people in the same space, like just being a lot more open. Naturally, I'm actually quite close and very private and yeah. what I'm I'm really learning and valuing a lot more especially given the past couple of years that we've had is yeah, yeah the value of community the value of friends the value of sharing okay. and just being honest in what's going on like yeah. hi how are you and no I'm not great today mm. <laughs> or do you know what it's yeah I'm not not great or this isn't positive, have it happening the way I had planned yeah um but it's okay you know so I think, yeah, community, friends, family, mm. working out, yeah. Okay. Have been really important for me. And whether growing up or now, is there any one individual, um, aside from family, mm -hmm. that you look at and they are almost a pinnacle of what you, you'd aspire to? Ooh, any one individual. Um, I think there's lots of elements in wow. different people. Okay, who would that be then? So there's one particular uncle of mine and I always joke with him that his inner child mm. is so alive. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like mad, you know? And recently, again, one of my really big things for this year is just to keep the inner child alive. Life mm. got really serious, yeah, <laughs> life yeah. got really tough. So just trying things for the first time, you know, not being afraid to to explore. Mm. Um, I've recently picked tennis back up, okay. you know, like the play element yeah, is yeah. really cool. Um, my mum, oh, you said not family. Oh, not even my uncle's family. Not family. Mm. As in famous figures? Not necessarily. Uh, How about your friendship circle? Yeah, yeah, my friendship circle. Um, I've got a really good friend of mine called Mandeep. She okay. has been, we met at work, mm. um, but she's like a sister to me and we share so much. And I think even during our, our conversations, yeah. she just always is able to 
perspective on things, okay. you know? So just being able to connect like, okay, this is happening. It's not necessarily a reflection of you. And I think just mm. her like solution focused way of thinking has yeah. been really inspiring to me. Do you know what? I feel like all my answers for this are mostly family. Okay. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about your, your mum then, because she's yeah. clearly an important person in, in your life. So yeah. um, uh, describe her, her importance to, to you and how, how, how she inspired you. Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> I, in, in every way, I think, yeah, I was born in, you know, born by my mum, yes, of course I was. But I was raised by my mum, you know, yeah. and my mum and my, my sister were all in a household and, um, or we were in a household, I've moved out. But um, she is just a very stable person. Okay. And I think she's, again, it's perspective. Yeah. I think even there was a time when, you know, she was like, you know what, there was a time I didn't have a job and then I got my biggest contract yet. My time being unemployed and getting my contract, yeah. the value of me doesn't change. You yeah. have to kind of just keep on believing in yourself. Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, that's very important because mm. when things are not popping, yeah. you could just be <laughs> thinking that, man, what am I doing? But you have to just keep your vision and your purpose and your mission mm. kind of front and center yeah. and put your head down. I'm also queen of drinking water and minding my business <laughs> which is I think has also been a bit of a saving grace and just stay focused on your on what it is that you're trying to achieve mm. so I think yeah the the stableness of my mom is just really inspirational and um yeah she's just very consistent in everything her lifestyle yeah. she wakes up she works out she plays tennis like four times a week mm. we've all got our watches sync um, so I'll wake up even on a Saturday morning by yeah. nine, ten. She's finished a workout. Oh yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think the consistency and okay. the stability side of things is really crucial and, and inspiring. Right. right, right. So if we move the topic along to COVID, yes. Because oh. um, you, you mentioned it a bit earlier on, but mm. since that period in life. What lessons would you say that you've learned? Oh, the biggest life lessons. Um, okay, COVID. I was made redundant during COVID, mm. um, which honestly for me was the best thing. Because yeah. <laughs> I, even in my role, I knew I wanted that to be it. I didn't want to have to get another job. I was mm. trying to think of how I was going to leave. But I, um, I'd got my property, so I knew I wanted, I needed a job to yeah, get a mortgage well and all that. Thank you. <laughs> um, which was good. But then you realise, after getting your home, you have to furnish it. You yeah. have to keep everything up. So I was really like, man, when, at what point do I escape this thing? Um, so when I was made redundant, you get a pay packet. I was like, oh, fantastic. I couldn't have thought of a better plan myself. Um, with that being said, then the realities of, of having your own thing really hit. Yeah. Um, the world closed down, the world shut down. We were working with like ads, Facebook ads mm. and Google ads and Insta ads, and that worked really, really well. Okay. And there was iOS changes and it was like, whoa, mm. it's a shift. Yeah. Um, but I think what I tried to do in the pandemic was then just focus on the production side of the business to prepare for things moving forward. So. I was able to spend five months in Kenya in 2020 okay. and then six months in 2021 yeah. um, because number one, red, the red list was coming and I was not going to be stuck in my little flat yeah. <laughs> going for half hour walks every day. I was just like, no, <laughs> this is not for me. Mm. And we had our, our pieces in a fulfillment center. So with regards to fulfilling orders, that was all taken care of. Yeah. And that was the main reason for, for doing that at the time. Yeah. Um, so biggest lessons, the ability to adapt, the ability to adapt, um, the power of, of e-commerce, I think yeah. that has been really crucial. We had orders from We've had orders from Australia, the US, you know, throughout the UK. And that was like, oh, that's really powerful. Um, and the power of community, I'd say that was one of the big ones. Because when you're going, when you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're a solo founder, it can be really isolating. It can yeah. be a really lonely journey. Mm -hmm. But again, talking to friends and making connections with people in a similar space and community to you is, um, yeah, it's really 
beautiful actually because yeah. you can share your stress and be like oh my gosh the world is ending and this happened they're like oh don't worry it's yeah. it happened to me last week it's gonna happen again next month you're like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe i'm being dramatic so i think again just perspective um so the importance of community the importance of perspective and then with me going to kenya for the five months for the six months just learning that things work different in yeah. other aspect, other parts of the world. So one of the big reasons I went to Kenya was because we introduced gold plating yeah. and I wanted to kind of set up the facilities out there. So okay. I bought the machinery in Italy, imported it into Kenya yeah. and set that up, which was a process dealing with import into Kenya is a big thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, it was also very humbling because it was like, okay, how do things work on the ground? How can I be of value? Um, while I'm here. So okay. I'd say those were some of my key lessons All from right. the pandemic. But yeah, the biggest one being the ability to adapt, okay. which I think is needed in life, to be honest. Yeah. Like you you had a, had a pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. um, was it over COVID or was it? Yes, yes. So our first pop-up shop mm. was, um, to be fair, we've had a few, but our first pop-up shop was Fennec. Okay. First biggish one was with Fennec in Red Cross. Right. And that was halfway through that mm. week, Omicron yeah. was announced. Yeah. So everything with, you know, the pandemic had kind of gone off and then dropped yeah. and then Omicron was announced halfway mm. through. So that experience <laughs> was quite traumatic. Um, but with that being said, I think with everything, you just have to learn, figure out what is you're supposed to be learning in this yeah. moment, in this time. Yeah. So our placement wasn't the best and our um, the experience, I also, the, the way our brand was perceived, it was okay. interesting to kind of see that. Wow. Um, but with that being said, I knew that we were going to rebrand. So mm. we were changing the name and the branding. Um, so I took all of the feedback from the Fennec pop-up okay. and have used it to rebrand into what we are. No. Why did you rebrand? Um, a number of reasons. So pre when we launched, we were actually called Kaleidoscope Beauty. Okay. Um, beauty being associated more with makeup and mm. cosmetics, which isn't something we do or plan right, to do. Right. Um, we also launched as a female-only jewellery brand. We now have pieces for both men and women. So it's something that was, you know, it appeals to both. Yeah. And then um, a lot of people... Kaleidoscope isn't the easiest name to spell. It's not the easiest word to spell. And with us being an SEO brand, I yeah. think okay. the, I mean, with being an e-commerce brand, SEO is important. So yeah. like, okay, we need to simplify this for, for everybody. And the reason for changing it to Umatoni, I really fought it for a while. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like, change it to your name. I was like, mm, no, mm, yeah. no, no, I need to do that. But, um, you know, the brand has, is, is like an extension of, of me and who I am. Mm -hmm. And it's a unique name. It's a beautiful yeah, name. And yeah. I think it really exudes what it is we're trying to, to do and, and represent in the space. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So, so like of all the, the kind of projects and tasks that you've done, what would you say has been the most inspirational, the one that's really stuck out to you? Uh, projects and tasks that we have done. Um, that's a good question. I would say... Hmm. During the first pandemic, mm. we had... The launch of our men's, our first men's piece was a ring yeah. called the Umoja ring, yeah. which initially was just brass and it had the African continent on okay. there. And that was planned in 2019, like end of 2019, was supposed to la launch first quarter of yeah. 2020. And then the yeah. pandemic happened. Yeah. And obviously I think the challenge there was the world is shutting down. How mm. do you now start telling people to buy, buy new products? Right. But with that being said, um, you know, when as everything shut down, I remember just reaching out to my artisans at the time, and they were in Babandog or a different slum right. at the time, and just on a human level, I was like, I'm not, it's not for an order, it's mm. just, how are you? Yeah, yeah. And cool, so we're just gonna um, end the interview with just like some quick fire A or B type questions. Yes. So, first one Beyonce or Whitney? Uh, oh, <laughs> I actually saw the Whitney Houston film on Saturday. Oh, really? Is that yeah. any good? It really was. Do you know, I was really happy that it wasn't on Lifetime. Okay. <laughs> it really did tell her story. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm a huge Beyonce fan. Okay. But yeah, I don't sure. think that's a fair question. 
Whitney's such a legend. Beyonce's on her way to being a legend. Uh, Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, iPhone or Android? iPhone. Uh, lifetime supply of makeup or lifetime supply of hair products? Makeup. Uh, My hair products are minimal. Okay. Uh, Lil' Kim or Cardi B? Oh, Cardi B. I think she's funny. Okay. All right. Um, a well-paid job in a toxic environment, a low-paid job, and it feels pretty much like heaven every day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the journey of an entrepreneur. <laughs> I think um, low-paid, yeah. a feeling of heaven every day, but that wouldn't be my only source of income. I'd right. have to find other other sources. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you an early riser or late to bed? Oh, I am a late to bed, yeah. but I'm really trying to shift that and change to being an early riser okay. so i'm trying to i actually woke up like 6 a.m today went to the gym 6 45 trying to be consistent on that <laughs> all right, all right. um how about uh fish and chips or matoki and some, some barbecue meats yeah yeah we're talking yeah, some okay. barbecue meats <laughs> um dragons then or the apprentice oh Probably Dragon's Den. It used to be The Apprentice, yeah. but especially towards the end, the interview phases are hilarious. But Dragon's Den. Okay. Um, Short and succinct. Okay, nice. And the last one, Nairobi or London? Hmm. Nairobi. Uh, it depends what for. Okay. Um, London's a great base, but yeah, yeah I love not even just Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. I love access to the beach being like 45 minutes mm. away, safari being another 45 minutes away, and just city yeah. life. Um, so yeah, I love Nairobi. Nairobi, okay, cool, nice. Well, I mean, Tony, it's, it's been really nice hearing your story. Um, I, I really love your work. And actually, we've even worked together because you yeah. um, provided jewelry for a shoot recently. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll include your uh, social media and website links all within the description below. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Love your brand, wearing your dress. It's amazing. Can't wait to wear it in Rwanda later this year. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.